Hi, this is Kate Crowley from Teachers College, Columbia University. With my colleagues and co-authors, Dr. Miriam Bigori and Chelsea Summer, we have created these video tutorials on cleft palate speech and feeding. This is module two, where we look at how cleft palate sounds are created and talk about resonance. In module 2.1, we look specifically at how speech sounds are created. Generally, there are three categories of sounds in English. One is the nasals, N, mm, mm, and those sounds you can make whether you have a cleft palate or not. Then you have high pressure sounds, and these are the ones that really are most difficult for someone with a cleft palate. And those are the p, b, t, d, k, k, sh, ch, and others. Then we have low pressure sounds like the w, r, o, and um, those are, usually kids with cleft palate can make those sounds, even when their palate is open, maybe not perfectly, but the high pressure sounds they won't be able to meet because they can't close that door between the mouth and the nose, and that door needs to be closed in order to make those high pressure sounds. So let's talk about how we make certain sounds. How do we make the mmm? So the mmm is typically acquired by children by the time they're three years old. So it's bilabial, meaning you have two, two lips that get put together. It's nasal, meaning the velum is lowered, even though you may not know the velum is lowered, it has to be to have that nasally sound. And the air flows through the nasal cavity. Mm. It is voiced, and we'll get to that, but down here you can place your hand and you can feel mm, and the nose, the lips, and the vocal cords are all vibrating. Mm, mm. Now let's see how that M is made. Mm. 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 How do we make the N sound, the N sound? Again, this is typically acquired by three years of age. The N, N is behind the, the teeth on the alveolar ridge. So if you put, make that N, you can feel where that, the tip of your tongue is. It's right behind the teeth on the alveolar ridge. It's a nasal, N, just like the M. The velum is lowered and the air flows through the nasal cavity. And you can feel it. N, Mm, mm, you can feel it uh, vibrating. Let's see and hear how the N is made. Mm. 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 How do we make this sound, the mm, like young? This sound is acquired between seven and nine years of age. It's acquired later, much later. So it's velar, I mean it's on the soft palate. Make that mm, like ring, sing. It's nasal, the velum's lowered and air's going right through the cavity and it's voiced. You can hear the mm, you can feel it all vibrate as in ring. Let's see how the mm is made. Mm. Mm. Now one of my colleagues from Ghana, Josephine Bampo, will talk about how nasals are made. We begin with the nasal sounds. These sounds are not likely to be affected by cleft palate. They are mm, as in Monday, mm, as in nail, mm, as in ringing. So these nasal sounds are important because when we're evaluating a child with a cleft palate, we want to see if they can make these sounds, the mm, mm, and mm. These sounds should not be affected by cleft palate. We use the AmeriCleft sentences. Now we're going to show you a video of a child with cleft palate and watch how they produce the mm, mm, and mm without any issues. Yeah, he was screaming and he ran out the door. And then he did not come again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now that we've learned a little bit about the nasal sounds, let's look at the low pressure sounds. 
So the no, in the low pressure sounds, the muscles are not as constricted, not as tightly held. That pressure doesn't need to be as strong in the velopharyngeal closure as for the higher pressure sounds. And usually they're not affected by cleft palate. So these are the sounds in English. W, O, R, and Y. How do we make the W sound? Well, that sound is acquired by three years of age. It's bilabial, W. It's a glide. The lips are rounded, then the mouth opens. Wah. The tongue doesn't touch any of the articulators and velum is partially raised. The voicing, the vocal cords are vibrating. Wah, as in water. Let's see in the animation how the what is made. Wah. 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 Now, you can see, you'll see the names of these people who are doing the sounds. These are all graduate students of speech language pathology here at Teachers College who've been working with me on many different projects and I wanted to include them. How do we make the sound ol? The ol again is typically made between, acquired between five and seven years old. Again, let's do it. It's the alveolar ol. The lips are separated ol. The tongue tip touches the alveolar ridge behind the top teeth. Oh, it's a liquid. The velum's partially raised. And oh, the vocal cords are vibrating, as in lily. Let's see how the oh is made. Oh. 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 How do we make the sound yeah? So this is acquired between four and five years old. By the way, for all the acquisition developmental date, the stages, we're using the Iowa norms, which are the standard used with, throughout the United States. So the yeah, it's palatal. Yeah, you feel where that tongue is to make that yeah? It's a glide. Yeah, the tongue glides from high front to a more open posture, and the velum is partly raised. Again, it's a voiced yeah. I urge you to do these silly things with me that I'm doing so you really get a sense of how these sounds are made. It's only from knowing this that you can then do the speech therapy to address where the issues are. Here again, we'll see the ya yeah animation. Ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Ya. Yeah. Here's another uh, low pressure sound, the er. Now the er is generally acquired by eight years of age, er as in red or ruby. The er is called post alveolar. So the tongue is elevated, but a little bit back from the teeth, more towards the hard palate. Er, it's a liquid, there's got a movement to it. The velum is partially raised and it's voiced er. Here it is. Er. Err. Err. This is a video of some women from Africa who work with children with cleft palate speech that we did a training for a couple of years ago. The next sounds are the low pressure sounds. These sounds are not likely to be affected by cleft palate. They are uh, as in Lisa, w, as in Wilma, r, as in Farmer. Now we're going to watch a 21-year-old with a repaired cleft palate who we saw and we determined that she did need another surgery so she could have good speech. You'll see her placement is excellent, her articulatory placement. Now we're going to show you how she's able to make those low pressure sounds. Watch these and see how they are not affected by her cleft palate. Sissy. Saw Sally race. Sissy saw Sally race. So this 21 year old who needs another surgery so she can have good speech on the high pressure sounds, she has no problem speaking and using those low pressure sounds we just looked at. Big voice. One, two, three, four, five, six, uh-huh. And now let's go with these. 16, 7. 
for y, for food, for food, for four, for four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now we're going to look at the high pressure sounds, and this is where kids with cleft palate are going to have difficulty. So let's have a look. Remember the door metaphor. We have the oral passage and the nasal passage. Here's the posterior pharyngeal wall, and here's the soft palate. Back out here is the opening to the mouth. So when a sound like a p is made, that velum has to go and touch that posterior pharyngeal wall, and the lateral walls have to be closed as well around the soft palate. So it's p, t, k, g, s, ch, sh, v, j, s. They all have to be closed. Now we're going to move forward and see what happens with these sounds. So here is the first of the sounds that a child with cleft palate cannot make. The p, p is typically acquired by three years of old, as in pop. It's bilabial. Both lips are used. It's a stop, meaning it doesn't continue on like a s, and it's not a glide like a r. It's a the velum's raised, air is held back behind the lips, and then pop, pops out. It's voiceless. If you put your fingers here, pop, pop, there's no vibration. Now we're going to look at how this is made inside. If someone has a cleft palate, it will be difficult to produce this because the velum has to be closed tightly in order to make the pressure that is required to make the p sound. And if someone has a cleft, that's not possible to do, therefore they'll have difficulty. Here's the next sound we're going to look at. It's the b. So we just looked at the p. Now we're going to look at the b. And the secret is the only difference between the p and the b is the ba is voiced. So let's walk through it. The ba is bilabial. It's a stop. Ba, ba. The velum's raised. Air is constricted at the lips. Ba. In order for that to happen, the velopharyngeal port has to be closed. That door is shut tight with all these high pressure sounds. The air gets trapped behind the lips and out comes the burst of air. Ba. It's voiced. Put your finger on your vocal folds and you can hear that. You can feel that ba, ba. Now do it. Let's just go back to the pa. Put your hand finger right here. Don't say pa because the vowel is, is uh, vibrating. But just the pa, pa. Can't feel anything. Now the ba, ba. You can feel that it's voiced. The vocal folds are vibrating. Let's see how that looks. Ba, ba. The palate is open, or if the palate is short, it's not closing the nasal cavity. If the nasal cavity is not uh, closed, the air is leaking through the nose. So in this case, the P and B sounds air, which was supposed to come out through the mouth, is coming out through the nose and it affects these sounds. Next sound we look at is another high pressure sound is the t. So if you see the t is produced behind the teeth at the alveolar ridge, t. It's a stop, t, t, t. The velum's raised, it all comes out the mouth. So in this case, the soft pat, the velopharyngeal port is closed and instead of things being trapped behind the closed lips, it's trapped behind with the tongue behind the teeth. So it's and then released. In order to have that burst of air, that velopharyngeal port has to be closed. And check it out, it's voiceless. T -t -t -t. The vocal folds are not vibrating. Here we go. T -t -t -t. Now, in order to produce the T sound, or T, you need to, the air needs to come through the mouth and with the opening, the villum doesn't close properly. Therefore, again, the air will escape through the nose. Now we're going to look at another high pressure sound, the D. 
So this is just like the ta, except it's voiced. Just like the ba and the pa, this is the da and the ta. Acquired by four years old, as in dog. Alveolar, it's a stop. The velum is raised and it's voiced. Da, da. Vocal folds are vibrating. Da, da, da. And d are also oral sounds, which means the air is coming out through the mouth. When there is cleft palate or when the palate is short, it's not uh, closing the nasal cavity. So that means the air leaks through the nasal cavity, which means the air that was supposed to come out through the mouth is escaping through the nose. The next high pressure sound we're gonna look at is the k. Now the k is a voiceless sound. It's acquired between three to four years of age. It's a velar sound, meaning that it's articulated at the soft palate. K. It's a stop. K, k, k. Tightly closed. Again, the air is trapped behind the tongue that's raised to the soft palate and then released. But there's got to be total closure between the, the oral cavity and the nasal cavity. It's got to be closed, the door. So it goes k, k, and it is k, voiceless, k, as in cat. K, k, k. To produce K, we need to have all the air, airflow coming through our mouth. Now, someone with a cleft palate, because there's an opening in the villum, it doesn't close properly, therefore the air escapes through the nose. That's how it is, that's how it's affected. Here's the ga. The ga is just like the ka. It's a velar sound, it's a stop. It requires full velar pharyngeal closure and it's voiced. Ga, ga. My vocal cords are vibrating. Da. 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 Cleft palate affects the k and g sounds because they are oral sounds. The air has to come out through the mouth, not through the nose. When there is cleft palate, the air leaks through the nose and some air are, uh, low air are coming out through the mouth and that affects the quality of the k and g sound. So now we're at the next one. The it's a labiodental. What does that mean? Lips and teeth. The top teeth touch the bottom lip. It's a fricative because there's friction. Another fricative, just to give you an idea, is the s and the sh. Those are fricatives. Very narrow constriction creates turbulence. And then the velum's raised, it's all closed off. It's voiceless. That's your F. As I told you, the air needs to come through the mouth to produce this sound. And someone with an opening, because, of the, because there's an opening in the villum, the air escapes through the nose. And that's how it's affected. The next sound we're looking at is V. So if you look at it, it's labial dental. It's like the but it's voiced. Labial dental, v, v, as in van. It's a fricative, v, you feel that friction. The upper teeth create constriction with the bottom lip. It tickles a lot. The air flows continually through the narrow constriction, v, creating turbulence. The velum's raised, total closure of that door between the um, pharynx and the, between the oral cavity and the nasal cavity, and it's voiced. The next sound we look at is the s. You probably already know it's a fricative. It's a called considered an alveolar sound. S. It's fricative because there's this turbulence and friction. Total closure of the velopharyngeal port, and it's voiceless. S. Now we call it alveolar here. S. 
You can also make it at top alveolar, which I do traditionally, but often we'll talk about this in the therapy piece with children with cleft palate because their maxilla may be retracted or they may have fistulas. Sometimes we actually have those kids suggest we try making the s not at the top, but at the bottom as in s that I'm making the S in a different placement. It's such a high pressure sound, and in order to make that sound, in order to push the air through the mouth, the villum needs to be shut completely. Now, someone with a cleft has an opening, and the air escapes through the nose. So how do we make the sound zzzz? It's typically acquired between seven to nine years of age, so it's a later sound, certainly like the it's alveolar, zzz, like the S. It's a fricative. There's this turbulence. It requires great closure. The velum is fully raised, <clears throat> and the vocal cords vibrate. It's voiced, zzz, and your S is just the unvoiced part. Zzz. You can make the S at the top, behind the top alveolars, zzz, or at the bottom. Zzz. Same with the Z. You just turn on your turn on your motor, as we say. Zzz, or zzz, both ways. Zzz. 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 When the palate is open or if the palate is short, the air leaks through the nasal cavity and the air that is coming out through the mouth will be low pressure. So the quality will be affected because of the air that is leaking through the nose. How about the ch as in child? It's an alveolar sound. Ch. It's an affricate, so it's got that friction, but there's a, a beginning and end to it, so a ch, ch. The sides of the tongue are raised towards the alveolar ridge, the front ch, ch. Air is completely obstructed um, behind that constriction, so it's and the vocal folds do, folds do not vibrate. Ch, 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 ch. Well, in order to produce ch, as I told you, the air needs to come through the mouth and it's stopped and then it, it's released. In order to do that, we need to create pressure and the opening is there for, with the cleft, the villum is open. Therefore, the air escapes through the nose and it's difficult to make the, the production of the ch because the air is escaping through the nose. Now here we have the j, as in juice, acquired by seven years old. It's alveolar j. It's an affricate. It's the same as the ch. It's just your vocal cords are vibrating. It's just voiced j, 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 j. Well, again, to make the j sound, we need to create pressure and the air needs to flow through the mouth. And someone with a cleft has an opening on the villum, which would make the air escape through the nose. Here's another sound, the shh. This is typically acquired by seven years old. It's palatal shh. Feel where that, your tongue is when you make it. It's fricative. The front of the tongue is raised to articulate the sides of the palate and the teeth. Shh. Air flows through a narrow constriction, creating turbulence, turbulent air. Shh. And the velum is raised. Everything's coming out the mouth, and it is voiceless. Shh. Everything is coming out of the mouth. Shh. 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 It's important to note what is the order of phonological development. That is, how do children typically acquire these sounds? And I actually, we've included in here the recommended ages of acquisition in years and months for phonemes and uh, for phonemes, um, based generally on 90% levels of acquisition, meaning 90% of children have acquired these particular sounds at these particular ages. 
Um, and this is the Iowa articulation norms. Um, so you can see we took the uh, articulation, the developmental norms that we put in the slides that just came before, and we took them directly from this research. So if I'm working with a child who is three years and is having nasal emissions on B, P, and I'm going to start off with B and P because in the order of development, they develop first before the S. However, if I'm working with a nine-year-old and the child has emissions on B, P, and S, I'm going to work on the, child, the sound which is more stimulable for the child. This concludes Module 2.1. We're now going to discuss resonance in Module 2.2. Remember, all of these modules are available at leadersproject.org, um, and there is a multiple choice test that you can take there as well um, to demonstrate your knowledge of 